It's been about a year and a half since the fence under the power line experiment. And I got a question asking if anything developed from that. Well, some new things were learned and there are thousands of interesting stories in the comments. And I'm going to share one that I think was pertinent to what I had going on at the end of this video and also show what I have going on now. Basically what was happening was a charge was being collected in that capacitor through electric induction, a capacitive link, not magnetic induction like you'd find in an iron core transformer, but from the high voltage alternating electric fields expanding out from the power lines. So some type of antenna could pick it up. What I discovered was that this fence wire or antenna didn't need to be made of any kind of superconductor or heavy gauge copper wire. And you can see how that progressed in my other videos. And it progressed to the point where I could just use treated wood, burlap, or rope in contact with a small pickup wire and use that as an antenna. And that resulted into what I called the electrosmog energy converter. It's what got destroyed a few weeks ago in the storm. And now I was doing all this outside of the power line easement just so there wouldn't be any conflict. I could have a fence under the power line, but they didn't want any trees or buildings. But I just doing everything outside of the easement, so there's no problem there. I didn't end up in jail. But there's only a small amount of power you can get at that distance. The voltages are still pretty impressive, but the current is pretty tiny. After the destruction of the electrosmog energy converter, this is something that I just put up. And what I did is I stretched out about 100 yards of high tensile strength steel wire, 17 gauge. And it's woven with some burlap ribbon, some four inch burlap ribbon, it's supported by some posts. It's off the easement. But what's happening is there's a small capacitive link between the power line wire in this burlap wire antenna. So it's picking up a charge. I got it coming down to the end, insulated with this porcelain insulator. And we'll take some readings of what's coming off of that through this uh, insulated wire right here. Like I was saying, I built this off of the easement just so there wouldn't be any conflict. I could build a house here if I wanted to. And in fact, just down the hill in this direction, there are houses this close to the power line. But what I did is I pounded in a bunch of studded T post and attached a piece of three quarter inch PVC conduit to the top of it to keep it insulated from the ground and the T post. And on each of these, I got a little elbow to keep the burlap from slapping up against it. Because if it was raining, water would be streaming down and it would short all through there. Now this burlap, it's about six and a half feet to the ground and it is treated with vinegar, so it's slightly conductive. And that's what I used like on the wood too and I also did it with rope. And it works as an antenna for picking up a charge. I have an insulated wire attached up here, turning down, grab a hold of it. And I'll short it out right against this fence post. That's the raw power we got coming off of this. Well, it's a very smoky, windy kind of day. The smoke is from Canadian fires. And we'll do a little testing on our scavenging wire and see what kind of voltages and current we're getting off of it. The first test will just be an open voltage test. I have a ground over here connected up to one side of the meter. This is a high voltage meter. We'll put it on 2000 volts AC. I think everybody can see that. And we'll take the lead wire from our scavenger wire and connect it up and see what we get. Yeah, it looks like we're getting a little over 1300 volts. The next test I'll do is a shorted current test through this meter. 
this meter couldn't take the high voltage, so I got to be kind of careful. So right now I got to short it out. And I'll go ahead and I'll connect it over here. And now I'll just unshort the direct short from the ground. I'll take that off. And we got a reading. Now this is AC microamps. So we're at 498 microamps AC. Point, actually it's 0.5 milliamps. So we're right around 0.5 milliamps right now. Okay, now I'll do a test through a load. This light right here is what I had connected before to my electro smog energy converter. I'll run the power through here. I'll test the current and the voltage at the same time so we get a power reading. It looks like we're hanging right around 500 microamps. So I have it all set up to go. I'll be running through this little light here. Just got to take that direct short off and that's what's happening. I don't know if you can see that light very well. It is going through there. Um, we got around 400 microamps. 399.4 microamps at 237 volts. So we just multiply that to get the power reading. I don't know why that's so shiny. You can't see that. Very good. And this is what I was leaving on all the time before. A little difficult to see. Let me short this out again. And then hold it closer and I'll turn it on. Now this is like 99 white LEDs. They're all on, and it's a little difficult to see daytime. Nighttime, they show up real good at a far distance. Short it out. And that's the power. This one here is always more difficult to read. I always get bad glare on this meter for some reason. But this is AC microamps and AC voltage over there. Now I'm going to go ahead and just do a plain resistance load. I have four resistors in the series. I don't remember what it was. Somewhere around 10 mega ohms, I think. And I just have to disconnect the direct short to get our readings. And here we are. 396 volts AC. And looks like 225 microamps AC. So you can see it's just a small amount of power. Now I can do some more experimenting to find the optimum load. But still with what I have out there, it's going to be less than a quarter of a watt. And it doesn't seem to be greater conductivity or greater surface area is what's needed. It just seems to be the spatial area. Now the electro smog energy converter that I put up there, it didn't have great conductivity. It was just a treated wood framework, uh, 6 foot by 12 foot and it was charging up to about a thousand volts so that's all that was and that seems to be all that's needed is just more of that and now I'd like to read a very interesting story left by a commenter it's very similar to what I was doing but a step up uh, we'll call this commenter DC for you and he writes I have a fence line that borders high voltage power lines about a quarter of a mile long I have been harnessing power off the fence for the past 23 years to charge solar batteries. It's not much power, but it really helps when the solar array 
is not producing power at night. I consider it an extra source of alternative energy. I have been an electrical contractor for over 36 years and I have always thought about this when I first bought the property and put up the fences. While I was installing the fence I realized I would get a little tingle once in a while so I decided to run an insulated wire similar to the one that you had to run on your fence to see how much power I was getting. I was surprised at the amount of power that I could get from it. So I came up with a way to harness it. I dug a trench four feet deep and ran two inch conduit 150 feet over to my main mechanical room where my batteries, inverters, and control equipment are. Haven't had any issues so far. I've also been in touch with the power companies and they said as long as you're not connecting anything to our equipment, they have no issue with it and nothing past my fence line. It's great for running phantom loads as well as LED lighting, etc. I hope you are able to harness as much as you can from your fence line. I really like your video. Thanks for sharing and keep up the great work. Stay safe out there. So I'm not the only one who's done this. It's been done for years and years, but it's just a little bit of power that you can really draw off it because you're so far from the power line. So I hope you found this video pretty interesting. And once again, I'd like to thank you for your time for watching it.